What is up everyone? My name is Ken, also known as Wiltshire, and welcome back to another video. And today is going to be yet another experiment video. And in my previous video, I spray painted the heatsink or the CPU cooler inside Optiflex to see if we would gain any performance or lose any performance, or if we would see an increase in thermals. So if you guys are interested in the results of that video, there is a link to the video in the description below of this video. And if you want to go ahead and click that, the link is there. But in that video and many previous other videos I've done on the Optiflex, there has been one suggestion that I've been absolutely avoiding doing, and that would be to paint the green PCB that is in the Optiflex black. Now, I would never, ever recommend doing this to anybody that doesn't know what they're doing. Um, a lot of you suggested using Plasti Dip, and I absolutely hate Plasti Dip with a passion. I hate working with it. I hate spraying it, I hate the look of it, I hate the feel of it, I work at a car dealership, I see enough of that crap for a lifetime, I just hate Plasti Dip with a passion. So with Plasti Dip out of the picture, I had to go and do some research to see if there was another avenue that I could take in terms of coloring the green PCB that you see beside me here. And I've come up with a solution that I think will probably work, I don't know, uh, but so we're gonna risk the motherboard for the views, I guess, but the, Solution that I came up with was to coat the motherboard with an acrylic conforming coating. And this stuff here is actually meant to waterproof motherboards or PCBs. So for an example, if you had an RC car that you wanted them kind of waterproof or, you know, water resistant, make it water resistant or drive it through a puddle or whatever, you could try coating the PCB that's inside that RC car with this stuff here and it should work. So with that theory in mind, if I coat the motherboard here with this guy here, it should allow me to paint the motherboard without damaging anything, obviously. Uh, I'm going to mask everything off, like the VRMs, the power delivery, uh, the chokes, the capacitors, because uh, I don't want to insulate those components, because obviously they need to vent heat. Power causes heat, and obviously in insulating those components would not be a good thing. So we're going to get to masking the motherboard off, and then we're going to spray it with the acrylic conformal coating, and then we'll move on to the engine enamel flat black paint that I also used on the CPU cooler. So that is the game plan. Again, I would not recommend trying this. Uh, who knows how this is gonna go, that I can end up with a dead motherboard at the end of the day. So yeah, let's get into it. Hopefully things don't go bad. I'm hoping they really don't go bad. I don't feel like buying another motherboard, but oh well, well, we'll do it for the experiment and answer the age old question. If you can paint a motherboard, so let's get into it. Hopefully things go fine. <laughs> So one thought that occurred to me before I started painting the motherboard inside Optiflex is I should probably record the thermal data before I paint it and then compare the thermal data to after I paint it, granted it if everything works, of course. So I've got the 3040 or Optiflex under a stress test. It's been about, been about 19 minutes right now. So I'm going to record the chipset temperature as well as the socket, the CPU socket temperature, which is the uh, temperature probe that's around the CPU socket. It's not the CPU itself. And then we've got the temperature for the motherboard itself right now. So for the uh, chipset, also known as PCH, we have a maximum temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, which is actually pretty good here. That's well under control. The motherboard ambient temperature is 49 degrees Celsius, so that's a little bit warmer. So that's usually the one we're going to actually have a look at after the fact, I, after I painted, of course, and if everything works, hopefully it does once again. So that's 49 degrees Celsius. And then the CPU socket, the probe that's near the CPU socket was 32 degrees Celsius here. So we're gonna write that down as well. So those are the thermal results after 20 minutes of stress test. So I'm gonna write that down, 20 minutes. At this point, nothing's changed since I started writing everything down. So those are our numbers here. So I'm gonna write them on this whiteboard here. So we have a comparison at the end of the video. So we have before and then after I paint it, so now we have some thermal results to keep an eye on. So now let's <laughs> mask the motherboard off and everything like that. And then we'll get to uh, obviously coating the motherboard with acrylic and then painting it. So fingers crossed once again, hopefully everything goes well. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not thrilled about doing this. My anxiety is going to the roof with this.
Okay, so the motherboard has now been painted for Optiflex, and this is actually a pretty good comparison shot here. So this is the motherboard, the dead one that was originally in it. This is the color that it, or what it used to look like. And this is what we have now after painting the used motherboard I bought to fix Optiflex in the first place. So basically I masked off everything that was important or that irradiates heat inside the case, such as uh, the capacitors, the VRMs, and so on and so forth, the chipset as well right there. I uh, didn't mess with the X16 slot because obviously uh, the graphics card is going to cover that. So um, the SATA ports were also covered up as well as the uh, PSU uh, power connector on the motherboard. So um, yeah, I, everything turned out pretty good. I actually like, quite like the look of the blacked out motherboard, but we're going to shove it inside the case now. I just want to show you guys a comparison of what it looks like now after being painted before it goes inside the case. So Optiflex is fully assembled now with the painted motherboard. I'm not sure how this is going to go. I believe it is now 4.16 a.m. I've been working on this thing for about eight hours now just to paint everything, cable manage everything, put it all back together. So I'm going to flick the power switch on the power supply and I'm not sure what's going to happen. Hopefully not a fire. Um, so here we go. Uh, it looks like everything turned on, so that's a good sign. It's going to shut off once as a, uh, a test boot here, I believe. There we go. That's a good sign, actually. That means the uh, motherboard in the 3040 has actually tested everything, and everything's ready to go. So if we hit the power button here, hopefully we get something on the screen. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, Painted Motherboard. I believe in you. Come on. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Thank God. Thank God. Okay, so you can paint Motherboard without damaging it. So, uh, but the next thing we're going to have a look at, I guess, is thermals. How are the thermals for the Painted Motherboard? I'm not too sure. But I'm, okay, I was going to say, I'm not going to hold my breath just yet because it hasn't gotten into Windows yet. But it uh, looks like we are now in Windows. So that's a good sign. Thank goodness the uh, 3040 lives once again. Optiflex lives. Um, so we're going to hop into ID64, give her a good old stress test. My computer is complaining at me because I have no internet connection right now. Um, we're going to give her an old stress test and then I'm going to um, compare the results before I painted it in terms of thermals and then after. So let's get into the stress test for about 20 minutes here and then we will come back with the results. All right, so it is the next day. I got so tired trying to finish this thing, I just had to go to sleep. But I left Optiflex running for 10 and a half hours. I left the timer on hardware info to know. And I only just started stress testing it 20 minutes ago. So we're 20 minutes into the stress test here, and we're going to record the final thermal results. So on the PCH, we have 37 and a half degrees Celsius. We'll just round that up to 38. And for the ambient temperature of the motherboard, we have 49 degrees, which is unchanged. And finally, for the CPU socket, we have a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. And keep in mind, all the fans on the computer are locked to a specific RPM. For the CPU, it was uh, 1710. And for the motherboard and front intake fans, they were 1540. So, what does that mean? Well, it looks like not much has changed because if we have a look at the thermal results here, so we have before, the PCH was 40 degrees, ambient was 49, CPU was 32, and PCH was 38. I rounded that up, it was 37 and a half or 37.75. 
Um, ambient was 49, so that's unchanged. And the CPU socket was 30 degrees, which is actually two degrees cooler than before, which is bizarre. Um, also could be within the margin of error. I'm not too sure. But that is going to pretty much confirm that you can paint a motherboard if you're smart about it. Don't go all willy-nilly and paint your motherboard with, say, a metallic paint because metallic paint contains metal in it. So that would obviously short your motherboard if you were to obviously use that on your motherboard. But I actually took the time to mask off all of the power delivery, such as the VRM, the chokes, the capacitors, everything that pretty much radiates heat, as I mentioned before. So I didn't suffocate any of the parts that generate a lot of heat. I masked them off. It took so long, it took me about two hours to mask everything off. And then another two hours to take all the paint or the tape off because I masked them off so well. They're really small components. But take your time if you're gonna do this. Take your time and mask everything off that has power running through it. Because if you don't, you probably can see a thermal increase. I didn't because I was smart and I already knew better but someone that's a beginner might not know better. So with that said, these two in combination with each other actually do work. So if you want to paint your motherboard, use Dupacolor Engine Enamel Paint with the combination of um, MG Chemicals Acrylic Conforming Coating. Uh, this actually probably saved the day right here. This is actually really cool stuff. I could actually use this if I'm using liquid metal on a CPU. Uh, I could spray the CPU Obviously I would mask off the CPU dye and I could apply liquid metal without having to worry about it spilling over the CPU dye and onto the other components surrounding the dye. But that actually is going to wrap up the video on painting a motherboard. So there you guys go. Thank you so much for the guys that commented that I should paint the Optiflex motherboard. I was a little um, worried about doing that, but I always like a challenge and you guys always challenge me to do things. So. Thank you guys for challenging me. It's been fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button for me risking my motherboard. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't have to buy another board. But again, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button as well. My name is Ken, also known as Voltshire. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.